one of the Steam Deck's biggest strengths is having the flexibility of a full PC. And with Steam Tinker Launch, we're about to realize that full dream. The full dream of customizing your games. In prior videos, I've talked about modifying your games, modifying your Steam games, modifying Breath of the Wild, and modifying a bunch of other stuff too. This goes a little up and beyond that. Steam Tinker Launch is many things, but it's best described by this random Redditor on r slash Linux Gaming. An incredible wrapper with a menu that lets you easily toggle and modify various settings for games on Linux. Anything from Proton versions to startup and exit scripts to Proton, DXVK, etc. settings, FSR, reshade, and even options for various tools like game mode, replay sorcery, game scope, etc. Tons more too. Steam Tinker Launch is capable of doing many, many things. And honestly, I would suggest going to the GitHub page and reading up on it because you have to go there anyways. Thankfully, there's a few highlights here listed already. There's custom per game environmental variables without having to use the command line or defining launch arguments. There's custom game executables, which changes which executable Steam launches. You know, just in case you have a game with a mod launcher or a custom launcher or something like that, you know? There's also easy installation of wine trick verbs. There's mod organizer 2 support, vortex mod manager support, special case support, reshade support, and the ability to download custom Proton and Wine versions. And yes, I know you can do this with Proton Up QT, but this is another option for you in case you don't want to go into desktop mode. That said, there are some features of Steam Tinker Launch that you really shouldn't be using with games that have anti-cheat. First, you'll want to head over to the GitHub page. Links in the description below. Secondly, on the main page, there should be instructions for installing it on the Steam Deck, which, given the differences between SteamOS and any other typical Linux installation, is warranted. Steam Deck support is said to be in its early stages still, which, you know, is totally understandable. Your mileage may vary, so this is your final warning. You could feasibly use the Flatpak, but there are some limitations with Flatpak that are undesirable for a program like this. The script that you would use to install Steam Tinker Launch actually has a way to detect whether or not you're running this on a Steam Deck. So yes, you would go ahead and download the main script and don't rename it to anything else. You want to keep it named as Steam Tinker Launch. No extensions whatsoever. You'll want to mark it as executable and you'll want to run it in the command line. You can simply do this by right clicking and pressing open terminal. You should then follow the instructions listed on the GitHub for Steam Deck. You can run it in the command line like so. And as you can see here, it's doing its magic now, just to give it a second to do its thing. You'll know when it's done. And would you look at that, it's done now. So, how do we use this thing? First and foremost, you're going to have to restart Steam. Once you do that, you're going to have to relaunch Steam. Now, if you want a game to make use of it, all you have to do is click on Properties, go to Compatibility, force the use of a compatibility layer, and then select Steam Tinker Launch. If a game has a native Linux version, there are different instructions listed on the main page, so you can follow that instead. This is for the Windows version of said games. So the game we're going to be focusing on today is Dragon's Dogma. If you forgot to set a compatibility layer on desktop mode, you can just do it in game mode instead. Just follow the instructions as seen here. You force compatibility layer and then you select Steam Tinker Launch. Now go ahead and launch the game. When a game starts up, you will now see this screen here before the game actually starts. If you don't press anything, the game will launch as normal. However, if you want to access the tinkering options, you click on main menu. You have like a two second window to do this. Yes, you would use a touchscreen for this. So as you can see, now we're going into these options and wow, there are a lot of options here. So many options here. For the sake of this video and simplicity, I'm not going to go over every single option this tool has to offer. If you want to know what Steam Tinker Launch is capable of, I would suggest going to the GitHub page and reading up because there's a lot here. So let's start up Mod Organizer 2. This is one of the main advertised features of Steam Tinker Launch, but Mod Organizer 2 through Steam Tinker Launch isn't exactly... How do I say this? It's not that great. There's work to be done and I'm hoping the developer sees this video here. 
As you can see here, this actually wasn't my first attempt to run Mod Organizer 2. If it was, you'd see a different screen here, but we're going to continue anyways. If you need a tutorial, you can press yes, but I don't. I don't know if you've watched any of my prior videos, but this was actually the same tool that was featured in my Fallout New Vegas video. If you're looking to set up Mod Organizer 2 for Fallout New Vegas or any other game that MO2 supports, then I would suggest watching that video instead. Because support in Mod Organizer 2 is... well how do I say it? It's kind of scuffed. I'm going to make some posts on the project's GitHub page once I make this video public. Steam Tinker Launch advertises browser support for Mod Organizer 2, and it opens a browser up just fine, but it opens up this janky Steam browser right here. I don't know if you know this or not, but this isn't working out for me. It's not downloading the file, nor is it actually doing anything. You know what, that's whatever. That was to be expected. Let's go ahead and launch the game through Mod Organizer 2. Herein lies the other issue with Mod Organizer 2 support, and you guessed it. The game doesn't launch through Steam Tinker Launcher Mod Organizer 2. If I had to decipher that error message, it seems like it's not detecting the GPU, despite the fact that we clearly have an APU, you know? And here I am, trying to launch it without Steam this time, and it doesn't work. It seems like you're just using Mod Organizer 2 to organize your mods and not launch the game from Steam Tinker Launch. You just organize your mods and then go back to the Steam Tinker Launch main menu and then launch your games from there. Maybe that's just how it always was meant to be. I'm not entirely certain, but you know. Enough about Mod Organizer 2 though, let's talk about Reshade. Reshade is a generic post-processing injector. Digital Foundry has an excellent video about Reshade and what it's fully capable of. Cause I'll admit, I'm kind of a Reshade noob. So how do we get started? Well, first and foremost, you'll want to go into the category menu. From there, you'll want to select the shader option. Just click on it and then press OK after you're done. You'll notice that once you load into it, all of the reshade boxes at top are not enabled. You should enable those like I've done so. You can also enable shader download and shader menu as well. You can also enable VK basalt as well. But for the purposes of this video, I'm not. And you know what, while I'm at it, I may as well show you how to download Proton GE using Steam Tinker Launch. Just click on download custom Proton, and then you'll have the option of downloading your custom Proton version. As you can see here, it defaults to downloading the latest Proton GE. It's absolutely worth mentioning that downloading Proton GE this way doesn't make it show up in the main Steam menu. If that feature is important to you, then I would recommend downloading Proton UpQT and using that to download all of your Proton GE versions. To set a specific Proton version you want to use, I would click on Game Menu. And from there, once the game menu loads up, you can set your Proton version. You do have to scroll down though. Yeah, like that. It's worth mentioning that there's way more options that you can enable and disable by default. But here, we're just gonna swap the Proton version right here. And we're going to select a Proton GE version. Since we just downloaded Proton GE 733, we're gonna try that out. We're then gonna select Save and Play. Can't forget to mention, if you enable reshade, it's going to give you all of these options right here. If you don't know what shaders you like, I would select them all, and then deselect the ones you aren't using afterwards in subsequent launches of the game. As you can see here, I'm not sure what I like, so I'm just going to select every single one of these right here, and I'm going to press OK. And would you look at that? The game launches, and now there's a weird little menu at the top right there. If you've never used reshade before, this is totally normal. It's compiling all of these different effects, and it could take a little bit. Though for 903 effects, it didn't take as long as I thought it would. And now we're in the game. This is what the reshade menu looks like. I'm not going to go over reshade because honestly, there's a lot to cover in reshade. And I downloaded way too many effects. I don't know which ones I want. It's absolutely worth mentioning that reshade only works on Windows versions of games, as reshade itself is just a Windows tool. So if you have a game with a native Linux version, but you want to use reshade, then you'll have to force it to download the Windows version by forcing the compatibility layer, of course. One of the main quirks of Reshade is that it has its own menu that you have to pull up by pressing the home key on your keyboard, or in this case, I bound it to L4. If you're the type of person that likes to constantly fiddle with your shaders, then I would suggest binding it and keeping it bound. Does Reshade impact your performance negatively? 
In my experience, no. But I don't have that many effects on, and if you have a bunch of effects, I'm sure it's gonna affect it negatively in some capacity. I've heard rumblings of using reshade to increase FPS somehow in video games, but I don't know anything about that and honestly, I'm not sure if I can really believe it. But if any reshade experts want to come to my comments and educate me on how to make reshade increase my FPS, then by all means. So what about games with native Linux builds? Like enter the Gungeon here. You would set this launch option right here. Just follow the instructions on the screen right here. If you attempt to use Steam Tinker Launch as a compatibility layer, it'll force you to install the Windows version of Enter the Gungeon, despite the fact that we have a native Linux version. That said, if you try to use Reshade or Special K or anything of the sort, you'll have to use the Windows versions of said games anyways. So while Steam Tinker Launch for native Linux games does work in desktop mode, it doesn't seem to work properly in game mode. As you can see here, I'm trying to boot up Enter the Gungeon and it just sits here in like a loading screen of some sort which I assume Steam is just waiting for Steam Tinker Launch to go away before showing me the game, for some reason. Game mode is weird sometimes. It is worth mentioning that you can use Steam Tinker Launch on desktop mode, but on the main default screen resolution without game mode, you can't see all of the options, which is why you see a lot of my footage in game mode. In desktop mode though, if you have an external display, this isn't an issue whatsoever. There was one feature that I was really excited to try out, but I couldn't get working for whatever reason. That being custom commands. For starters, whatever launcher or whatever custom command you're trying to use has to work in Linux. And in the case of PSO2 Tweaker, it didn't work under Linux. Maybe I just had bad luck. That said, I did try that with Enter the Gungeon with a mod loader, and it did seem to work. However, the mod loader itself had issues. Furthermore, combined with the issues I had with using Steam Tinker Launch in game mode for native Linux games, it just put me in an endless loading loop. So what's the verdict here? Well, Steam Tinker Launch isn't ready for prime time. I'll admit, part of it was a string of bad luck. But I think there are some issues that do need to be addressed, especially when it came to native Linux versions of games. That said, when it works, it's a joy. I'll be following this project with great interest. Godspeed. If you want to support High Tech Low Life, you should check out our Patreon page. You can support us for as little as $5 a month. And if you like our YouTube content, you should subscribe to High Tech Low Life. You can also check out our Discord server, where I preside, and also a bunch of other community members as well. 